You are listening to the Standard News Podcast. Lumberjack show makes its debut at Port Perry Fair this September. Claudia Sitzma, the Standard, Skugog. The Port Perry Fair will have an exciting new addition to its list of activities this year, hosting its first presentation of a lumberjack show. This event will be featured on Saturday, September 1st, and there will be three half-hour shows presented between noon and 5 p.m. This fun-filled and fast-paced show consists of two American lumberjacks competing against two Canadian lumberjacks in activities such as chainsaw racing, speed sawing, standing block chop, axe throwing, fire building, and chainsaw carving. The event will be hosted by an MC and includes jokes, music, and audience participation. Although this is an entertainment event, lumberjacks have a rich history in North American culture, dating back to the 1800s, when the logging industry depended on these men to provide wood to many emerging commercial industries of the time. The term lumberjack refers to an era predating 1945 and before the use of modern technological advances and industrial equipment that began the mass harvesting of trees. Lumberjacks in the 19th and early 20th century used only hand tools and the job was backbreaking and dangerous, providing minimal pay and bleak camp living conditions. However, as a result of this, history views these brave men and women of an earlier era with great respect for their contributions to North America's economic growth and celebrates them for their virtues of strength, endurance, bravery, and fortitude. Modern-day lumberjacks are now referred to as loggers and use chainsaws and heavy industrial forestry vehicles to cut trees. However, the job is still considered a rugged and sometimes dangerous occupation. Some facts about our current national lumber industry from Natural Resources Canada say Canada has 347 million hectares of forest land. Canada's forests account for 9% of the world's forest cover and 40% of the world's forests certified as being sustainably managed. In 2015, direct employment in the Canadian forest industry, as measured by Statistics Canada's system of national accounts, increased from 2014 levels by 1.5% to 201,645 jobs. By value, Canada is the world's leading exporter of softwood lumber and newsprint. The forest industry contributed $22.1 billion to nominal gross domestic product, GDP, in 2015. The United States is by far the largest buyer of Canadian forest products. Less than 0.3% of Canada's forests are harvested annually. Less than 0.02% of Canada's forests are deforested each year. 100% of forests harvested on Canada's public land must be successfully regenerated. Look, up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! No, it's the Standard! It's what? It's the Standard newspaper, serving Durham Region and the city of Kawartha Lakes. For all your local stories and much more, pick up the Standard today. Call 905-985-6985 or visit www.thestandardnewspaper.ca. Read it today. M.P. Schmale encouraging youth to help make their communities more accessible. Kawartha Lakes. Local M.P. Jamie Schmale is calling on youth leaders from Halliburton Kawartha Lakes Brock who might be interested in making a difference in their community by working with eligible organizations to submit project proposals under the Enabling Accessibilities Funds, EAF, Youth Innovation Component. Youth interested in participating are required to identify accessibility barriers in public places or workplaces within their immediate and or surrounding communities and seek out interested organizations willing to work with them to develop an EAF accessibility project funding proposal. Not-for-profit organizations, for-profit organizations with up to 99 full-time equivalent employees, small municipalities with a population under 125,000, indigenous organizations including band councils, tribal councils and self government entities and territorial governments are eligible to apply for project funding of up to $10,000. Interested youth between the ages of 15 and 30 years of age can apply at https colon can apply at https colon forward slash forward slash www.canada.ca forward slash en forward slash employment dash social dash development forward slash services forward slash funding, forward slash enabling, dash accessibility, dash fund, dash youth, dash innovation, dot html. The call for expressions of interest and for youth leaders will close on September 21st, 2018. Skugog launches tourism plan. 
Patio Project, Dan Kearns, The Standard, Scugog. The township of Scugog launched their community tourism strategy and seasonal patio pilot project at an event held on Tuesday, July 17th in Palmer Park. This strategy provides important direction, goals, and actions that will encourage and assist with growing our tourism industry, War II Councillor and Scugog Deputy Mayor Janet Guido said. There are already some small actions being delivered from the plan. Public washroom signs that can be seen in locations in downtown Port Perry. And today, we are pleased to see these seasonal patios, which are enhancing the downtown experience. We now have two patios operating in this area as part of the pilot project. Councillor Guido also praised the patio pilot project, speaking about when she visited the patios. You see neighbors, you see friends, and people you haven't seen in a while. And it felt alive. It was similar to many European countries, where the night doesn't stop at 5 p.m. It just continues, she said. It's that sense of community that we are bringing to our downtown. Two patios have been installed as part of the pilot project, one at Marwin's Global Bistro and one at the Pantry Shelf. The patio pilot project was approved by Skugog Council in April. At the time, four businesses were approved to participate in the pilot. Central County's tourism helped create Skugog's community tourism strategy, a plan with over 22 action items in it. The plan was endorsed by Skugog Council also in April. For me, the most exciting thing about the strategy is that it has a three-year implementable action plan. It has goals, it has ideas, it has things that we want to do, Chuck Thibault, Executive Director of Central County's Tourism, told those in attendance. In a press release, Scugog Township CAO Paul Allure noted the plan includes small wins and achievable goals that can be completed by the end of 2018. To read the full tourism strategy, go online to www.scugog.ca. Tech, tech, technical foul. North Durham Sports. Midway and Cornish are superb at swimming. Marlowe Stanfield, special to the standard. Uxbridge. A pair of local swimmers squared off against the top competition from across the country last week at the Swimming Canada Junior Nationals in Winnipeg. Uxbridge Swim Club members Shannon Meadway and Hannah Cornish were among the hundreds of young athletes from coast to coast competing at the event, which ran from July 25th to 30th. Meadway had an outstanding showing at the event in the 15 to 17 category. She won a gold medal in the 200 meter backstroke to go along with the silver medal in the 200 meter individual medley. As well, she posted top five finishes in the 100 meter backstroke and the 400 meter individual medley. Meanwhile, Cornish posted a personal best in the 100 meter fly, finishing in the top 20. The Port Perry resident would conclude her meet with an outstanding showing in the 50 meter freestyle, crossing the line in fourth place. For more information on the Uxbridge Swim Club, please visit their Facebook page. The theme of Uxbridge's 154th Fall Fair is Farm Gate to Dinner Plate. Uxbridge. Midway passes will be available for purchase at Canadian Tire and Sugar FX starting August 6th. Cost is $30 each, a saving of $5. There will be a free shuttle bus service between Uxbridge Secondary School and Elgin Park on Saturday, September 8th between 3 p.m. and 11 p.m. Soper Creek Wildlife Rescue will be new to the fair this year. They will provide materials and hold talks at times to be scheduled between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. on both Saturday and Sunday. Entries for the home craft and junior sections may be dropped off at the fair office both Wednesday and Thursday evenings between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. Horticulture entries will be received Thursday between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. The Fair Board appreciates the support of all sponsors. Spartan Ready Mix is again providing free parking. CSN Collision Center Precision is returning as the Demolition Derby sponsor, and CHOKO Authentics forward slash Fast Eddy Speedwear is this year's Tractor Pull sponsor. The fair's website is www.uxbridgefair.ca, and volunteers are invited to contact Bev Harrison at 905-852-5877, or email this address, all small letters, bevharrison686 at yahoo.ca. For more local news, visit www.thestandardnewspaper.ca. The Standard Podcast was produced by Greenstream Studio. Visit www.greenstreamstudio.ca for all your multimedia production needs. 